All right, you guys, um, if, if you're here for the Citizen Lobby Day breakout session, you are in the right place. And we're going to get our call started right away. We've got a whole lot to pack into a short amount of time. We've got about 45 minutes and I've been looking forward to this breakout session for a while. Uh, my, my name is Azer Cole. I'm the Deputy Political Director here at American Promise. Um, joining me and helping to run the back end is Alan Law Police, the newest edition of the American Promise team, who many of you already know. Uh, Alan is many things. He's a fifth generation Kansas farmer, three time congressional reform candidate, an army veteran, educator, and now the state's manager at American Promise. Uh, he's made an immediate positive impact and, and is really a huge addition to the AP team already. So thank you for being here, Alan. It is my sincere pleasure. Fantastic. And it's, it's my sincere pleasure to report that we've had over 60 congressional meetings in these past few days, and we have even more scheduled in the coming days and weeks. And simply put, it, it's nothing short of heroic what everyone here is doing to better our country in this powerful, foundational, and permanent fashion of advancing a constitutional amendment to get big money out of politics. So thank you all for your part in this. And I'll tell you the plan for our breakout session tonight is this. We're going to hear from two congressional champions for this work, Representative Jim McGovern of Massachusetts and Representative Dean Phillips of Minnesota. Then we're gonna hear from Jim Rubens, a Republican former state Senator of New Hampshire on his lobby day experiences and new insights. We're gonna then hear from Judy Nagel and Howard Hauser in Wisconsin's 8th district, who will share how they strategically brought in business and veteran advocates based on what they knew was important to their member of Congress, Representative Mike Gallagher. And then we're gonna open it up. We wanna hear from folks on this call. We wanna hear you share your stories and successes from our citizen lobby days. And it's gonna be a fun call um, and we're gonna get right into it. And it's now my great honor to introduce our first speaker. And, and that's Representative Jim McGovern here, who's going to kick us off. Representative McGovern represents the second congressional district of Massachusetts. And he's a longtime champion of this amendment and, and really a champion for American Promise as an organization. Last year, he helped with the physical room arrangements for this meeting in Washington, D.C., um, this year, we've taken care of the logistics for this meeting. It's, it's not quite the same thing here in this Zoom room, but we're making it work. And in Congress, Representative McGovern fights for fairness, decency, and respect for all people and the idea that each of us has an obligation to give back to our community. Aspiring to fulfill the promise of American democracy and representative government is not a new th thing for Representative McGovern. And as a legislative staffer right out of college, he saw that too often Washington worked for the rich and the powerful instead of the American people. Today, he serves as the chairman of the House Rules Committee and carries with him a strong sense of right and wrong in his govern governance, making him truly a champion, not only for the people of Massachusetts second district, for the entire country positively impacted by his leadership. So with that, thank you, Representative McGovern for being here on our Citizen Lobby Days, the, the final night of our official um, Citizen Lobby Days for, for being here to share a little bit about why this citizen advocacy around a constitutional amendment to get big money out of politics is so important. And I'm gonna put the spotlight on you for everyone to see and the floor is yours, take it away. Well, thank you, Azur, and, and thank you to everybody who has been involved in this effort uh, lobbying to uh, get big money out of out of politics. I, I, I can't thank you enough. You know, when I was in college, I used to have a history professor who used to end every class uh, the same way. He used to say, uh, before he dismissed us, remember, the world will not get better on its own. And to be honest with you, um, while I was taking his class, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Uh, but uh, the, the longer I've been around, the more I appreciate the wisdom of those words. Look, enough, not, look at nothing changes, not, no good happens unless like-minded people dedicated to good demand that it happens. And, um, and, I, um, and, I, and I really believe that your efforts 
your lobbying efforts are, are, are already making a difference, but ultimately will be the key uh, to, the, to changing our entire system. I want to thank my colleague, uh, Dean Phillips, who I have great admiration for. I mean, he's one of the bright lights in Congress, and I'm so proud to be with him. Uh, as you know, he's uh, one of the lead sponsors of HJ Res One, uh, and um, and I, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be prouder to be on this call with him. Let me let me, let me just make a couple of points. Look, um, you know, you know, this is a, a heavy lift. Uh, getting a supermajority um, in Congress to support a constitutional amendment, and then you know, going through the whole process uh, to to you know, get money out of politics um, is is not easy, um, but it is necessary. And I will tell you that as somebody who's been in Congress since 1996, this system is is corrupt. It's it's been corrupted by big money, um, and uh, you know, and it and 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 that big money has also dissuaded people from actually showing up and voting in elections. People think that their vote doesn't make any difference. Well, you know, I, I have been working hard to try to convey to people that your vote does matter and that elections do matter. And as evidenced by the fact that we have a new president and we have uh, majorities in the House and Senate that are dedicated to try to change the realities in this country. But, um, but ultimately, I mean, the key to good legislation, the key to good policy is to, is to limit the influence of big money in, into our political system. And so I, I want to thank all of you for what you're doing. And, um, and Dean and I and, and others are going to do everything we can to try to advance this cause. I'll just say one other thing. Um, in addition to, you know, pushing for HJ Res 1, um, I hope you'll also push for HR 1, uh, which, uh, which, among other things, uh, will help level the playing field uh, in terms of our elections, form an independent redistricting commissions rather than having state legislatures decide how congressional districts are drawn. Uh, it also includes the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. It also includes more disclosure requirements so you actually know um, who's supporting what and how much money they're putting into it. Um, and that's important because I think that has, that, that can pass. Uh, and I, and my, it passed the House already. My hope, my hope is that, that we get it through the Senate. And if we can get that enacted into law, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we level the playing field and we allow for your voices uh, and the voices of others to become more important than somebody's pack check, you know, or some, uh, you know, or, or dark money. Um, in order to in order to change the reality, we need to elect people um, who are like minded, uh, and um, HR one is one of the ways to do that. So. Um, I can't thank you enough uh, for all that you're doing. Um, you know, I, I believe in this country. I love this country. I want it to be better. Uh, and as somebody who's been around a lot longer than Dean in, in Congress, I can tell you that uh, uh, big money plays too big of, an, uh, too big of a role. Uh, and um, the time has come for us to, uh, to change that. So um, I'm grateful to all of you. Uh, and... Um, uh, I look forward to working with you in the weeks and months ahead. Thanks. Super. Thank, thank you, Congressman, and thank you for your leadership. As always, I, I see some some muted rounds of applause going on, and I wish we could be whooping and, and hollering in, in the halls of D.C., but I don't think anyone on this call is, you know, naive to the to the challenge ahead of us, but as you said, it's it's a necessary challenge and one that folks here are you know, working every day to, to accomplish. Um, so right, thank you. You're all on the right side of history. So I, uh, please know that. It, here, here. Um, thank you for that. And it's, it's an unusual night where we get to introduce the second member of Congress to the same call, but that's exactly what tonight is. And now it's my honor to introduce one of your colleagues uh, who shares the same spirit of service. It's representative Dean Phillips in Minnesota's third district. And, Representative Phillips is a father, a businessman, a civic leader, an eternal optimist. Elected in 2019, he's a powerful new reform champion in Congress, already making a big impact. And in Congress, he's focused on restoring Americans' faith in our government. He's on a mission to inspire a new era 
of collaboration in Washington and to end the corrupting influence of special interest money in our politics. Representative Phillips is the vice chair of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus and is also a member of the House Ethics, Small Business and Foreign Affairs Committees. Through and through, he's a champion of this amendment and this work and we thank you for being here tonight, Representative Phillips, to share why this work is so important to you and so important to all of us. So allow me to spotlight your video for everyone here and take it away, the floor is yours. Thank you, Azer, for the kind introduction. Uh, to my friend and colleague, Jim McGovern, uh, a gentleman, a statesman, I wish we had 434 others just like Jim. He's forgotten more about how the House operates than I'll ever know. And as the chairman of the Rules Committee, one of the most important roles in Congress uh, and just amongst the very best that we have. So happy to be here with you, Jim. Uh, and to every one of you, uh, in particular, I want to salute uh, Vicki Barnes, my constituent. Uh, representing Minnesota and American Promise tonight. Uh, I love you all. I love what you're doing. Uh, we are brothers and sisters in this mission. And uh, money and politics is what indeed inspired me to run for office in the first place, having been on the other side of the table for so many years, being solicited, uh, seeing how grotesque this political industrial complex is, uh, an industry that needs significant uh, reformation, uh, as you well know. Uh, 10,000, that's a number I want you to think about, 10,000, that's the number of hours per week that members of Congress spend raising money, 10,000 hours per week. Extrapolate that over the course of a year uh, and you can understand uh, why we have such a massive problem uh, with money in politics. Uh, we are unique amongst nations in so many ways relative to policy, uh, perhaps none more destructive than our lack of good policy relative to campaign finance. Uh, you might know that I believe I'm the only member of Congress that refuses all money from PACs, uh, from federal lobbyists, and even from fellow members of Congress, uh, because the money game uh, consumes way too much time, way too much energy, and as my friend and colleague noted earlier, uh, affords those with the greatest amount of resources the greatest access. And that is in no way, shape or form uh, what our founders had intended. Uh, and we have a lot of work to do and it starts with all of you. And no matter what your number one issue might be, I ask that your number two issue be campaign finance reform. Uh, we do it in a way uh, that is going to lead to only more and more problems for democracy. Uh, we've seen what happened on January 6th. We see the exorbitant amounts of money raised even because of January 6th. It's time that we be more transparent. It's time that we elevate the quiet voices, those with the least access. And that means all of you, uh, whether we have a group of 20, 200, 2,000 or 200,000 on tonight's Zoom, we've got work to do. And that is inviting our friends and neighbors, uh, our professional colleagues uh, to this table. I think it's the most important table to be at in our country. Uh, as uh, Congressman McGovern noted, uh, it will be part of the most important legacy you might leave, and surely you will be on the right side of history. Uh, a constitutional amendment is no easy task. You all know that. Uh, we still haven't even passed the ERA, for goodness sakes. But elevating the issue is the most important thing we can possibly do right now. And nothing's impossible uh, because uh, the future will be brighter uh, when we address this issue. Uh, and there's no group that I'm more fond of, uh, more proud to be associated with, uh, than American promise. So I wish you Godspeed. I ask that you keep the faith, that you keep engaged, and most importantly, that you keep extending invitations to like-minded people so that we can elevate this issue uh, to its, um, its rightful prominent position in the hierarchy of needs in our country. So with that, Azer, I'll turn it back to you and thank you all uh, for your commitment to the most important cause uh, with which you can be associated. Super. Thank you, Congressman. And, and thanks to your great staff. I see Zach on the call tonight here, um, really for, for leading in every facet of, of this issue in, in Washington and, and back home in Minnesota. So thank you again for being here tonight. And um, this is the, the absolute group to, to get us there over the finish line for this historic reform. And, and I think we all know that the challenge in front of us translating cross-partisan support among citizens for this amendment into cross-partisan support among elected officials is, 
is really the crucial challenge to overcome. And I'm now going to turn it over to Jim Rubens, a Republican, former state senator in New Hampshire, uh, among many other things, a member of the American Promise Board of Directors, maybe the person who's been in the most lobby day meetings in these last 72 hours. I'm not sure. There's probably a cluster of folks at the top who've been in eight, nine, 10, 11 meetings. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim here to share key takeaways from his lobby day experience and, and reason for optimism as we build relationships with congressional offices and particularly with Republican congressional offices. Jim, thank you for being here and for all your help these last couple of days. And, and there is reason for optimism. Uh, thank you, Azor. Uh, and, and just first, a, a, an acknowledgement to the amazing volunteers from American Promise getting meetings, not, not just with Democrats, but with Republicans, more meetings than, than ever before. A remarkable job. We even had a meeting with uh, Senator Ted Cruz's uh, chief counsel today. Very frank conversation. A remarkable achievement and drum of uh, North Texas chapter. So what I'm, what I'm seeing when I'm hearing from Republicans, there is increased awareness of the problem. Clearly, I'm not going to overstate the extent to which this is a big mountain, but Republicans with whom we're talking see the problem much more clearly now post-2020 than, than perhaps a couple of three years ago. They're seeing this flood of outside, out, outside, out-of-state money. They're seeing increased amounts of this money going into negative campaigning, attacks ad, attack ads, and they're seeing that this flood is drowning out conversations between constituents, prospective voters who might support this candidate, and, and the candidates. They're seeing, they're seeing that issues are being replaced by negativity. They're seeing that elections in, in swings, swing districts across the country, including right down to the uh, state house level, are being nationalized. So issues that may be different from state to state, policy preferences, candidate preferences, all being nationalized by the flood of money. And, and particularly for Republicans and conservatives, this, this trend is destroying federalism. This nationalization of all elections is destroying the cherished 10th Amendment to, their, to our Constitution. So we, we, we have more conversation going on now, the Republicans. We're, we're seeing an opening among Republicans. And one of our challenges that we see is the divided, to be frank, the divided Republican caucus. We have MAGA Republicans and we have, we have problem solver type Republicans. We need both of these type of Republicans on board in this issue. So as we're selling, we don't want to, we don't want to abandon efforts to sell even very, very hard to get folks. And we're going to get some of these folks. We're going to get some of the folks. Uh, another thing that is sort of hard news, and, and forgive me to, our, to the two, uh, two congressmen who are Democrats, is uh, it's pretty particularly important in these Republican meetings to distinguish what we're working on. We're working at American Promise on only one thing, the 28th Amendment. Uh, forgive me about the ERA, but we're, we're working on an amendment to the US Constitution to allow Congress and the states if they wish to set reasonable limits on campaign money. Uh, we're not working on HR1. And uh, Republicans uh, with, with skeptic, skepticism in their face, uh, a, a wave of release com relief comes across their faces when we know, no, we're not working on that. We're working on this amendment, which we know will require multi-bipartisanship and will require that. So, um, our goal here among uh, for Republicans, you know, if we can't sign everyone on we're talking with right now this year, we want to keep the conversation going. We want to show them our draft language, uh, which which is very synchronous with 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 HJR one. But we want to show them our draft language, which uh, and we want to help Republicans feel comfortable adding their mark. When we want to see uh, we want to see a bill come from Republicans and then those Republicans add members uh, of the Problem Solvers Caucus uh, from, from the Democrat Party. So that's, that's our report. Big mountain, but we're gaining ground, clearly gaining ground. Super. Thank, thank you, Jim, for you know, articulating some of the um, you know, rhetorical um, strategies for, for addressing this issue, for identifying some of the, the big challenges and, and some of the ways that we're moving forward here with, with these offices on, on the left and on the right. And now I'm very excited to bring Judy Nagel and, and Howard Hauser into the conversation. 
Um, they are Rotarians, they're business leaders and American Promise advocates in Wisconsin's eighth district. Um, they've strategically built a powerful group of business and veteran leaders in their district based on their particular member of Congress and his background. Um, that, that's Representative Mike Gallagher in the eighth district. So Judy, I'd love to bring you into the conversation and can you tell us about the group that you've put together and just a, a brief summary of, of how your lobby day meeting went this week? Uh, well, Howard and I started out as a fellow Rotary members and from there it's, it's continued to grow. Had an opportunity to reach out to uh, several people in the community, one of which is a Rotary member who is the Director of Economic Development for Downtown Green Bay, and then also invited a Phil Silver Star veteran that I knew and the VP of Government Affairs for our chamber. First of all, we started by mailing them information about American Promise and about our goal for an amendment. And when we got back in touch with them, they said, yes, we're interested. And uh, that followed up with a meeting with uh, Jeff Clements, a virtual meeting with Jeff Clements and, and Azor, uh, bringing these uh, individuals up to date, giving them more background information. And they became very engaged. They began offering names of other people uh, that we could reach out to. Uh, we then set up an appointment with Mike Gallagher's uh, office. He was unable to be available yesterday, but he had a, an appointed staff person that we did talk to, and that included Alan and uh, Jeff Clements and, and Azor. And um, I think he was somewhat unfamiliar with the newest language, so uh, Jeff really kind of brought him up to date on that. He indicated that he would share that with the congressman. And then also uh, we're looking at uh, setting up another meeting uh, for the end of May. But we did have our Silver Star veteran participate in that meeting as well as the uh, economic development person for downtown Green Bay. Um, all of which had had prior conversations with Representative Gallagher, um, on other issues. So we feel um, optimistic. And, and Howard, you can add your perspective. I would say that the, the meeting that we had was frankly, I thought the most productive meeting, um, the, the, the last meeting that we just had with Kevin, more productive than the, the two prior meetings that we had had with the representative himself, because we actually learned in this meeting more specifically about the representatives um, concerns with what we had speak, spoken with him previously about. And that allowed us then to address some of those concerns and give him a pathway to exploring you know, options to move forward and get uh, Representative Gallagher engaged in you know, the process. And we found that there, in fact, there was common ground there so you know, I felt that you know, we had a, an extremely good meeting this last meeting. And the, I think that it, didn't, it certainly helped to have additional members of our community involved. It's just not you know, the Judy and Howard show. You know, it, it became you know, a little bit broader. And one of those, one of those other people, as you mentioned, um, Jeff Merkus, he actually knew um, Rep Representative Gallagher from before his, his involvement in, in the Congress. So, it all kind of worked together really well. Um, the discussion, I think, was you know, very candid um, and everybody opened up and it, it was very productive. Super, thank you. Thank you both for sharing. The thing that really excited me about this process was, you know, and in, in just thinking critically about your particular member of Congress and in, in researching him and his background and the issues that seemed to really drive and motivate him, you know, we identified his military background as, as a big motivator and you know his his support for businesses in his district as a big motivator and then said okay well who do we know in our rolodex and, and which organizations might we reach out to and sort of in that process that was how we brought in the, these particular advocates to this meeting and i know as a national network this is the strategic direction that more and more we're really working towards and i think will more and more give us the best chance of of winning over some of these um, undecided votes into yes votes in Congress. So 
thank you both for sharing. And, and now I'm, I'm really excited and glad we're right on schedule and we've got the, the rest of this time to continue hearing from folks about their Wabi Day experiences. So I, I see Ken Chestick in Wyoming has, has his hand up. So Ken, would you be able to share quickly about your Wabi Day experience? And then let's go to Andrum next and, and we'll just keep going here. Yes, thank you, Azer. Um, we had uh, four of us from Wyoming Promise met uh, with Senator Barrasso himself. We didn't have a staffer involved at all. It was just the four of us and the Senator. Uh, he only gave us 10 minutes, so we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, so as a consequence, we went straight to the ask, not, not straight to it, but very quickly got to the ask to ask him to take to give us his reaction to the alternative um, language for the, for the amendment that, that you all circulated. And his response was, I haven't read it yet, but what about HR1 and what about all this uh, public funding of finance? And he was trying to change the subject on us. Uh, so we had a very unproductive meeting. We kept trying to go back to the, uh, to the, to the amendment. But the question I have for the group and, and, or anybody, and we can talk afterwards, um, he, he hit us with what I think is going to turn into the a new way of resisting, the, the new Republican talking point against what we're doing. And that is that small money, small donors are now taking over. We see a lot of campaigns where they're, uh, they're crowdsourcing a lot of a ton of money and it's, it's no, big money is no longer a problem. It's the small money from out of state that's a problem. And, and uh, so they're, they don't see the imperative for doing anything because we can't control small money. That's that. That's my report. Yeah. Well, uh, thank thank you for for sharing that. I, I will certainly brainstorm. You know, the the quick talking point to respond to to that type of um, you know re resistance. It sounds like you know we're, we're as we've sort of flagged. It's it's a skill to be able to bring back any sort of distraction. To our conversation and say, you know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this specific constitutional amendment. Um, but, you know, th thank you, Ken, for sharing. And I, I want to make sure we get to everyone. I, I see Jim has his hand up. Jim, do you want to quickly quick come in there just a, just a yeah. minute or so? Quick two responses to that. Number one, the small dollar donors uh, are the, the money is concentrated and controlled by a tiny number of people. So the concentration problem continues. Secondly, the small donors that, that are able to be mobilized and give directly to candidates, it's only a very small number of candidates that can generate uh, sufficient media attention, public recognition to obtain that. So most of the candidates in Congress cannot benefit, cannot use small money. Those that do are primarily the small money is directed and controlled by the hands of the, uh, the leadership of the bodies. So the concentration problem, the distance from average voters who can vote for the candidate is, uh, is retained, maintained, and aggravated. There we go. Thank you. And, and this, this will be recorded so we can even clip that into a one minute uh, audio clip. And, and let's keep going here. Let's, let's go Thank and you. hear from from Ann Drum, and, and then we'll go to Laura Nittmeyer in California next. All right, thank you, Azer. I just wanna testify about the value of persistence in um, keeping at these offices in requesting meetings. Uh, we had one representative from North Texas that honestly, I had given up on getting a meeting with them. And then my phone started blowing up in the middle of another lobby day meeting Tuesday because he got back to our volunteer and or his office got back to our volunteer and said, yeah, the representative will talk to you at one o'clock and he's got 15 minutes. So we had like two hours to get ready for the meeting and he spoke to us on his uh, cell phone while he was driving. We are still in the process of scheduling uh, three meetings. So our lobby day is going to turn into lobby month but as a result of that persistence, I think we're gonna get meetings with really every single office from North mm -hmm. Texas, as well as both senators. Easy. That's fantastic. Persistence is the word. Um, lo lobby days, lobby weeks, lobby months, lobby, lobby mindset. I think this is what's, <laughs> what really moves the needle. So thank you, Anne, um, for, for really making it happen in North Texas. Um, Let's bring Laura Nittmeyer into the conversation, and we'll, then we'll go to Susan in Michigan and, and Nancy in Massachusetts after that. Thanks, Laura. Sure, Azer. Okay. Um, 
just briefly, I want to say how much I appreciate the Herculean efforts of my small and mighty team of six people. There were four veterans of us and two completely new people, which were very important to us because they were co constituents and were the key to getting us some of the Republican meetings. Um, we requested eight meetings altogether. We've had five already, and we're certain to get at least two more. Um, three Republicans and two Democrats. We selected those because uh, two of the freshmen uh, Republican in the House, and uh, we have a new Senator, Alex Padilla, so that's a natural to um, visit the, uh, his staff as well. Um, it was difficult to get meetings because we're in a, a really hot market period, so we re really appreciate the 30 minutes we have. The training was awesome. We were very focused on what we were doing, and um, we can talk more about how to set this up well by sending a more comprehensive letter ahead when we request the meetings. Um, we really focused on just a couple of things. First of all, bringing every single office and um, staff member current on what the issue is and where it stands. Then we were trying to foster or find specific cross-partisan relationships that are already existing, maybe that we, of course, we don't know about because they have their own friends and relationships in Congress. Um, and then getting finally specific feedback on the draft language that Jim Rubens and many others have been working on for about two years to get uh, a version of the amendment that's going to be ultimately successful. So um, real successes for us this week were two Republicans, I think, will give us very specific feedback um, on the language. One is a, like a constitutional expert, so that's really important, and that's why we sought him out. Um, the other one is a new member of the Problem Solvers Caucus, and we're going to get the third meeting with the um, with the other freshman Republican staff. Um, we've got surprises, though. Uh, some uh, there are actually two two Democrats that uh, have been multiple co-sponsors of the amendment versions in the past, um, where they requested to have the briefing package for the Republicans, the Republican briefing materials, because they have ongoing conversations um, about the you know, um, surface transportation, reauthorization and other things that are coming up. And they thought that would be an opportunity to talk with people that they know in Congress about this issue. So um, they can use those to expand our, you know, our circle of, um, of supporters or maybe move the needle just a little bit in, um, in our direction. Um, otherwise, um, I think that's probably, we know so far that's gonna expand probably for other Republicans that we know about thus far. And I just wanna say by way of surprise, the enthusiasm and respect of all the staff that we met with um, and real partnerships that they said they desire from us. Um, we've really established ourselves as subject matter experts that they value. And so, you know, we're, we have a conversation now where we didn't have one before. And I'm looking forward to talking with the leaders and uh, others who are in the day-to-day -day volunteer work about how to make these, these meetings a little bit um, easier to set up because as a first time Zoom experience, it was a, a bit harrowing to do you know five meetings in three days, but uh, Super, great thank team. <laughs> the, the, the great team, yeah, thank you, Laura. And you know, a huge state like California to think strategically, okay, you know, we want these, five meetings, we want these seven meetings. I know that was a whole process in itself. So so congratulations to you and, and your team for making it happen. And it doesn't sound like the meetings are over yet. Um, that's fantastic. And, and let's bring Susan Beckett into the conversation from Michigan. Thank you, Susan. And how were your meetings? Any big takeaways? Uh, our meetings so far have been really productive. Um, I partic particularly wanted to talk with you about the um, meeting we had yesterday with Congressman the freshman Republican Congressman from Michigan, Peter Meyer. Mm -hmm. And I wanna go back to that, that um, concern someone else raised about small donors, because this was a concern of his as well. Um, he felt that, like Jim said, only a small number of people are able to, to um, generate the kind of enthusiasm to, to get huge numbers of people to donate to them, but they do it with histrionics and, and um, absurd kinds of, of um, media. And he felt that that actually increases the extremism 
in the country. So um, even though he was generally supportive, particularly of getting dark money out of politics, um, he saw this as, a, as an ongoing concern. Um, and then the other thing is, I, I was hoping for some clarification from you, because we still have another meeting with a, another um, Republican coming up next week. And that's about the, the, the draft language to go over with them. So I, I'm a little confused. Are we talking about the language for HJ Res 1, or are we talking about the uh, another set of language? And if so, is there one that's specifically for Republicans? And how do I find it? It, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that quickly and we can connect offline as well, Susan, but, um, you know, uh, for House Republicans, we, we certainly w hope that that they do hop on board House Joint Resolution 1 and, and at the same time, we're asking for feedback on language that we're working to introduce with an even number of Republicans and Democrats, very similar to House Joint Resolution 1, and you'll see it linked right there in, in the training document. Um, that, that you should have access to. And, and if you don't, just send me a quick note and, and I'll make sure we get it to you. Um, but, but thank you for leading these, these Michigan meetings. And let's bring Nancy Heselton into the conversation. Hey, Nancy, thanks for being here. And, and how did your meetings go? Uh, well, we, I, I, um, I just wanted to make one uh, comment. We went to see Senator Ed Markey. He's a senator, Massachusetts senator. And he, I think, is really... Um, supportive of this issue when we did a ballot initiative three years ago. He was, you know, super on board. But when we got to this meeting, um, the chief counsel, the staff member who we, or the chief counsel who we met with, you know, he wasn't, you know, he said he hadn't heard any emails, he hadn't had any outreach from anybody, he hadn't heard anything about this issue in this session. And, you know, he, he, he really basically said the squeaky wheel gets the oil on this one and he hasn't heard anything from any of his constituents. So here we are and with this, this senator who's totally supportive of this if he hears from his constituents, but that wasn't, you know, he isn't hearing from anybody. So it was just a good wake up call that, you know, the squeaky wheel does get the oil in, we need to just keep at these senators, even, in, or, or Congress people, even if they are supportive, they forget really easily. It, yeah, you know, it's, it's just the importance of an engaged citizenry. Alan and I were talking with, with Monica in New Jersey today, and we we're just saying, you know, wouldn't it make sense if every member of Congress automatically was a co-sponsor of what they were a co-sponsor of? last session and and it's not the case and it's it's even more reason why we can't take someone like senator markey for granted who who co-sponsored sdr 51 last session and we can think well he's squarely squarely in our camp so we never have to talk with him again you know we're building a relationship and even if someone's you know some degree of supportive they might go back a step or they might go forward a step if if we meet with them again so that, that's a great it's a great point and you know reminder for folks um who you know I think most everyone um, knows and appreciates that, but it is, it's not an easy job being an engaged citizen, but it, it, no one said it's an easy job that you sign up for when you, when you try to win a healthy democracy. Thank, thank you for that reminder. And we maybe have time for Susan Muller to share. Susan, you are unmuted. Thank you, nice to see your face and, and thrilled that you were able to participate in these meetings today. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, what what inspired me to um, follow up with is Nancy. We had a similar um, occurrence. We uh, met with my my uh, my rep uh, in Concord, um, Lori Trahan, and she thought she was on HR. Or it was it was her um, <clears throat> associate that was there, Ron, and he said that Lori was definitely sponsoring HJ Res One, and we couldn't see her name on it. And then he looked it up and he goes, oh my goodness, we, we've just assumed she was on it because she was on it last year mm -hmm. and, and that he would take care of that over the weekend and get her on it. But um, I, that's a, a very good point that sometimes they're moving so fast and there's so many bills that they don't even exactly know what they're on and what they're not. So um, uh, that was good. And it was, uh, it was my first time that I was in a meeting that was on the Democratic side uh, versus the Republican side. And it was really a breath of fresh air because 
they sort of agreed with everything. And I, that was, that was a nice um, feeling. So it's great to be a at part. The, at the at the end of the NCLC, Susan, it's it's nice it's nice to see a you know an NCLC fearless fearless planning leader in the past. So thank you for for remaining in, involved and participating. And um, it wouldn't be a lobby day recap session if I didn't urge and encourage and celebrate everyone who already has to fill out uh, a meeting reporting form, which I just put in the chat here, so we can um, retain all of this useful information and in, in your insight from your meetings um, and, and not lose any of it with with time you know we're in a, we're in a long not too long hopefully but a multi-year project and we want to make sure we, we have the best information and build upon it so um, I am impressed not shocked but impressed that we've gotten through everything that we set out to do on time and you know in the, in the spirit of ending, on time as always in in the spirit of celebration i just want to thank everyone for for making this another hugely successful citizen lobby days and i know they're not over but you know maybe everyone can unmute themselves and we can do a round of applause um for ourselves i think that would be nice and you know let's just celebrate and celebrate yourself and for what what you did here it's it, i know it's been just a ton of work and um, Vicki Barnes said, I don't want to celebrate with another Zoom meeting, Acer, and I don't want to celebrate with another Zoom meeting either. So celebrate no. in some other fashion as well off of Zoom, but um, ce celebrate and celebrate again and says ice cream next time. I, I certainly <laughs> hope there will be some. Um, so, so thanks you guys. Um, what, what a couple day whirlwind and I know it's not over, but um, cheers just phenomenal work <laughs> cheers, cheers I, I had wanted to send ice cream in the mail <laughs> somehow give it to everyone give everyone a coupon but <laughs> well we can just watch ben cohen's video from last year yeah, yeah there you go yeah it's awesome it really is <laughs> the bb yeah, pfizer can help us send ice cream by mail <laughs> if I could say one thing, this is Ryan from uh, Jim McGovern's office. Thank everyone so much for doing all this. Um, as you know, Jim's one of the colleagues of this bill, and I'm just going to drop my email into the chat for everyone. Mm -hmm. If there's any support you want or anything to help out in your advocacy, please let us know. We're happy to push the cause of something that you fought for for a long time. And um, also, you know, we wish that everyone could co-sponsor again if they were on last year, but unfortunately, um, this resolution was introduced right around the same time that we had the unfortunate events around January 6th, and it might have missed some people on the emails those days. So we got a reminding everyone, like, that's a, a great story that people thought that they were on and weren't quite yet. We just got to keep on it. We got, we got to get everyone on again. But thanks again, and... Uh, Hopefully ice cream in person next time. Thank you, Ryan. Exactly. Thank thank you, Ryan. And and thank you, everyone. And and have a good rest of your night and good rest of your lobby day meetings for folks that still have them. But um, congratulations. It's it's no small deal. It's no small accomplishment. So good good night, everyone. Thank you, Azer. Thanks, Azer. Bye. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good, how are you?